Let's dive a little deeper into the pathophysiology of RSV. So first of all, how do we become infected? Well, RSV is extremely contagious and technically can spread by either droplet or contact. But here's the thing, RSV can only be aerosolized on large droplets, and these can't travel very far. So that means that contact is overall more important. And as a result, if you know a kid has RSV, in many places droplet isolation is not considered necessary. Now once you're infected, there is an incubation period of two to eight days. And after upper respiratory tract infections, it takes one to three days to get lower respiratory tract infections. And we presume that RSV gets from the upper to the lower respiratory tract by either aspiration or intercellular transmission. Now what is intercellular transmission? Well that means that RSV can spread directly from one cell to its neighbor by causing the cells to fuse. And this actually explains the name respiratory syncytial virus because a syncytium is a multinucleated cell made by fusion of a bunch of cells. And when RSV is replicating in the lower respiratory tract, traveling from cell to cell, it can cause cells to fuse entirely, forming syncytia. So that's a mechanism of spread that you might not have been familiar with. Now as far as treatment of RSV, we don't have any great targeted treatments. So the mainstay of treatment is supportive care. And this includes relieving nasal obstruction in infants using saline drops and a suction bulb and supplemental oxygen. Also, giving inhaled hypertonic saline has shown some benefit and is often given to infants who are hospitalized. Now, there is an antiviral treatment active against RSV called ribavirin, and it's used for other viruses too. But the truth is it has not demonstrated any improvement in bronchiolitis in clinical trials. And that's probably because by the time you have lower respiratory symptoms of RSV, most of the viral load is already cleared and the symptoms are actually because of the host response. The one situation where ribavirin can be considered is in immunosuppressed patients who are less able to effectively clear the virus, and in those patients it can be given either through an inhaled or systemic form. Other treatment options like bronchodilators and corticosteroids are often used for RSV bronchiolitis in the hospital setting, but they haven't demonstrated benefit and are not recommended for treatment. So remember, supportive care is best.